Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. My name is Jason Hedman. We are uh, privileged to have opportunity to gather together with the fuel group to read God's word. So uh, how many of you believe in God? Okay, a couple of you do. That's good to hear. How many of you believe that God's word is inspired, as in like the Holy Spirit spoke? We don't know whether it's exactly Aramaic or whether it was in Hebrew or Septuagint Greek or whatever it is, but the big point is that God's speaking through the Holy Spirit had caused people to write it down. We're blessed and fortunate because instead of having a couple thousand scrolls rolled up in a jar somewhere in the caves like they found a few years ago, we actually have uh, what I think is the very best thing, and that's the King James Version of the Bible. So we had uh, a uh, highly esteemed financial advisor who is certified and has a fiduciary duty under uh, FINRA to do things right. We had him select. See, we had a whole bunch of scriptures here, right, Jorge? Uh, he did. Yes, and you uh, subcontracted with this gentleman over here whose uh, name is? Alex. Alex, who uh, was able to pick at random a, a scripture. What scripture did you pick there, Alex? Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. We've got uh, a bunch of folks here. We've got 25 verses. So what do you say we split it up three ways? Are there three people who are uh, either less spiritual, needing scripture to be read by them, or more spiritual, being able to read God's word without being nervous in front of strangers. We have three volunteers to read scripture. We got Brian, we've got Jack, and we've got, I hope, Bob, because if not, I'd have to rename him. <laughs> so why don't we go ahead, Brian, you were first, as you take the first seven or so there, and then we'll have uh, Jack, take from the 7 to 14, and we'll let you take us home there, Bob, if you'd be so kind. And maybe we should pray. Anyone want to pray? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Ah, don't make the pastor do work on his day off. Well, Father, we just thank you for this time together, this fellowship, Lord. We just endeavor to preserve that unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. We just thank you for our brother coming to share the very words of life with us today. And we receive it with great joy. And we ask that this food would nourish us and bless us and our fellowship would grow with you and one another in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Well, there, Brian, if you don't mind reading the first uh, seven the verses there, if you'd be so kind, to chapter 3. Yes, yes. I think I'll take it through 8 and then we'll get a ah, yeah, go even, ahead. even divide there. Chapter 3, Colossians. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on the things above, yes, not on things of earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concoptions, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things for which things sake the wrath of God comes on and the children of disobedience. In the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them, but now ye also put off all these anger wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Excellent, Jack. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Sicilian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfection. Morning, finish. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body. And be ye thankful. 
Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Wives, submit yourselves to your husband as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is unpleasing to the Lord. This is well pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. Not with eye service, as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily, as to the Lord and not unto men. Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive from the wrong which he hath done. And there is no respect of persons. Well, amen. Well, that's the Word of God, and uh, as we said, we believe that uh, God has inspired the Word, and we have uh, read this scripture here, and we uh, also try to uh, abide by what they call the ancient Israel, they had the Shema that was, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God. So we try to live by the law of the finger here, that rather than be like Fox News and talk all over each other, if you feel there's something you see here in this third chapter, and the uh, 25 verses have a lot to chew on, you can raise your finger, I'll call on you. How many of you went to public school? Okay, a few of you did. Well, sometimes you would see someone in the back row, the teacher would say something, you'd see these people whisper something, you couldn't quite hear it, then it all laugh uproariously, and you felt they're really sharing a good joke, but if you're far away and you obeyed the teacher, you wouldn't get that benefit of that joke. So we don't want that to happen here. So if you raise your finger, if there's any comments or thoughts, feel free to raise your finger. I try to have a pretty good peripheral version or vision. And 39 years as a trial lawyer and driving the highways of Brevard County, you can raise any finger you want. They're all alike to me, so it doesn't make any difference. And that way we can have hopefully one conversation guided by the Holy Spirit to see what it is in these scriptures that we have. We do have a five-minute rule that if you do spend more than five minutes talking or preaching or talking about something that really has nothing to do with the third chapter of Colossians, but is very spiritual and very important to you, we will try to be tolerant and patient with one another, but try and keep it short somewhat. And that way hopefully you can have a conversation directed by the Holy Spirit. So, anybody feel anything out of these 25 verses? Look, there's Brian and there's Bill. Hoo-wee, I trained him well. Go right ahead, Brian. You beat him, too. He's getting old. I, I had to, just because it was just right off the bat, my initial things that popped out to me was, by no coincidence, God does not do coincidence, but um, Alex and Jorge were talking to Aiden about his future career. And he had made the point that uh, even though it's finance and there, there's, you know, the potential for doing some shady things. Um, he, he did a C.S. Lewis quote that something along the lines that when, 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 you, when you serve the Lord through your toil, it's, it's, it's a huge blessing. Excellent. So Which one of the verses is that there, Brian? That's a good so sermon. You ought to write that down. I believe. And whatever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yep. Uh, giving thanks to God the Father. So if I'm like, if I go to work and I just mail it in because I'm in a crappy mood, I just pretty much did that to Jesus, not my employer. Wow. Um, and then 23, and whatever ye do, do it partially as to the Lord, and not unto men. So even if I have a lousy boss, it's irrelevant. Excellent. Yes, Bill. Mine's a little simpler. I don't know about concupiscence. Well, yeah, you don't even pronounce it right. Concupiscence, how's that sound for you? And there's two kinds. There's the good kind of concupiscence and then there's the evil kind of concupiscence. But you've got to stay away from the evil concupiscence. Which is like a, basically very similar to the inordinate affection. You know what that is, don't you? 
It's like getting inflamed and carried away by your lust. You can get inflamed and carried away for Jesus, it's all right. You get inflamed and carried away for something wicked, well, you'll have hell to pay, I think. But yeah, and, and God wrote these words for a purpose, and they mean something. Concupiscence. Don't you use that every time you say, I got this feeling of concupiscence coming all over me here now, and I need to get rid of it somehow. <laughs> yeah. Well, your life has now been enlarged, Alex. You see, next time you say, how does that make you feel? And you say, concupiscence, that's how it is. And the next time you go see the doctor, they'll put you right in the psycho ward when you say that. You'll get to minister the gospel there. Yes, Alex. Verse 20 has always been one that <clears throat> stood out to me, and not for nothing, but I think there's a, a failing in the English language to translate this properly, because it says, children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. And if we go back to you know, Exodus with the Ten Commandments, it says, children, honor your father and mother. Yes. And there's a big difference in honoring your parents and obeying your parents, and the Greek that's here is actually the Greek little children. So it doesn't mean that as a 37-year-old child to my parents that I'm obligated under Scripture to obey them. But in Exodus, it just simply says, children, honor your father and mother. So you can honor your parents, not obey your parents. And so it's just an interesting thing, like as an adult with my own children and still having my parents alive, balancing that, honoring my parents, but still telling my children, you have to obey. So it's just an interesting. Mm -hmm. It's good stuff. Yes, Jorge. We're not saying no to no. Somebody here says, <laughs> don't push your kids. Don't piss them off. Yeah. Because you're going to go the other way. That's 21 there. It says that, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Verse 21 says, fathers, provoke not your children to anger lest they be discouraged. Right. That's difficult. That's, that's really the moment when you're disciplining your kids is when they make you mad. So how do you how do you gauge how far do you need to go? Do you, do you put time out? I'm going to take yourself in the way. What's, what punishment? Are you too severe? You know? As long as you don't cause any evil concupiscence. Go ahead, Alex. He had his finger up. I'm not done yet. I've got five, don't. four minutes left. Okay. Yeah, All right. He's just next. He's just next. You're not done yet. Okay, go ahead. But not all your kids are alike, right? So, you know, I have three kids five years apart. Praise God. So, and my daughter has four kids. So, normally, the first one you're either treating especially easy, because it's your first child, uh, or very harsh. And then the last Go one, right ahead. If you're looking to get people their food, you just uh, wander right up. Don't don't worry about interrupting. No, you're not at all. Madison crab cake. There. It is. Sorry about that, guys. Food always comes first. Oh, well, this is true. <laughs> it was only Jorge talking. <laughs> We're waiting for Alex. So you're talking about the difference between your daughter and your four kids. Now go ahead, finish that up there. Now, don't let his crab cakes get in the way of your. We tend to treat kids differently as we get older. And as we realize from the first one, you have multiple kids, that you did something right or wrong, then you try to avoid the second one. And then if you have a third or fourth, and the last one is you're a really good parent, then they get the best of you, and the first one got the shitty side. Oops. So, delete. Well, it depends on how you look at that, because uh, I, I think the thing that is universal in our lives is we change. And, and hopefully everyone at this table could say, I'm not the same person I was some of us could say 50 years ago, 60 years ago, right? Right, Bob? You could say, <laughs> I'm not the same person I was 50 years ago. <laughs> yeah, uh, but, but in, in all sincerity, the humbling thing for me is I look back at things, and, and when you have more than one child, you do behave differently. And part of it is you change and look at the world. I mean, how many of you remember having to find a pay phone to call your parents, okay? Some of you do, others look at us perplexed like uh, Alex over there, like. I know how to use a pay phone. Oh, you just don't have any change. You don't have anything on your card. But uh, I say that only because everything changes. And unlike 
you know, unlike God's word, which, you know, hey, we got words like concupiscence there, but we can figure it out by the Holy Spirit what that really means. But God doesn't change, and we're all changing like crazy. And if you don't believe that, let's just see how many push ups we could do here when there was a point in time we could all do 40 or 50 push ups. It wouldn't be a thing to get the President's Medal, Medal of Award of Honor at Fitness and PE. Now I doubt they even take kids outside of the school, let them walk around, or do any exercise whatsoever, <laughs> let alone be held accountable. But anyway, I digest. Alex, you had a finger up there now that we finally got Jorge uh, off his high horse there about well, his yeah, parenting. I don't think that, that Jorge has anything like, there's anything wrong with what he said, but I think we have to make a distinction between discipline and provo provoking. Aha! Uh -huh. Because if we're disciplining our children because they're being idiots, we yes. can't provoke them to anger. We're simply making correction. But if I get home and I look at my kid and I'm like, go away, leave me alone, don't bother me, you're annoying. I want nothing to do with you. I'm not doing anything from a place of love or discipline or compassion. I'm just pissed off because I had a bad day and I don't want them to bother me. That's going to provoke them to anger. But if I come home and I'm engaging with them and then, you know, my son takes his Hot Wheels car and chucks it at his sister's head and, like, cuts her open, I'm not just supposed to be like, oh. Good shot. <laughs> you shouldn't do that. Like, I don't want to make you angry. He's already angry, and I need to correct that behavior. So there's nothing wrong with being corrected. God does that for us. And all of us need a good swift kick in the butt every once in a while from the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Yep. How many had, uh, seriously, how many had a mom and dad or dad who would be in the house and, and give you correction or feedback about how you were behaving as you're growing up? Okay. And sometimes that is positive feedback, sometimes that is negative feedback. But I've talked to a lot of people that really one of their biggest problems is they did not have a father or the father they had was very passive, would not correct when things were going wrong, and it set them up to be in a life where there wasn't a good model of God, because how many of you uh, uh, consider God your father, okay? How many of you felt from your heavenly father that there was something you were doing, and he would tell you about it politely, but then he was going to take steps that would make it such that you would not do that particular thing ever again at some point in time, because I think that is something that if you have not experienced it, God bless you, but if you do experience it, you'll understand very clearly that God does love us, he is our father, and those who are his children are corrected. I'm not sure about those who are not his children, they may be able to walk and do all kinds of things that we don't do, but that's something that is... And, and I think we probably could look at our Heavenly Father. He doesn't want you to be angry at Him, and He doesn't want you to be discouraged, because that's the very instruction He's giving to Jorge as a father, or to me as a father, or to anyone around this table who's blessed with children, or cursed with children, because it is a blessing and a curse, because you get the joy of seeing them, but you also have the sadness of seeing some of the stupid things they do, despite the fact that your mother, or their mother, and your wife, and you, and everybody told them, do not be stupid, they seem to find that all on their own somehow, especially in this crazy world we're in. It breaks your heart. Bob, yes, go ahead. Hey, wait a minute, Brian, put your fingers in your ears because now your dad's talking. Go ahead there, verse 6. Verse 16. 16. Uh, what we're talking about today. It says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another with songs, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace and God. Yeah. So I think that ties all this everybody's talking about the together. That's good. I, Brian. I, that's, that kind of goes back to um, better context for 21. Um, it's our fleshly it's our fleshly inclination to provoke our kids. Because we're, we're messed up. Mm -hmm. So this this whole book, if not but just this chapter, this whole book is, is to encourage and build up the Christian and to be prepared for those fleshly tendencies and crucify them. Um, that's, this is, that's a tough one to me because I still do it. You know, you catch me at the wrong time and I make a smart-ass comment to my, my son who's a special needs son, for goodness sake. So right, right. It's like, I, I have this evil that lives in me. Wow. And it's, and I guess we all do. Mm -hmm. And so, but the whole point is you can mess him up badly with your evil heart. 
if, if you're not careful. And no one wants to intentionally hurt their son. Right, right. That's good stuff. Bill? You don't have to be evil to let your kids. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean... You can subcontract it to the look government. At, look at Vance and look at Vance and look at... Uh, or some of the other things that back in the early days, they were law. You couldn't go to uh, the swimming hole with a girl, you know, you couldn't dance. Yeah. You couldn't do, go to a movie. Those things were evil. <laughs> Maybe not. How long are you? I've been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been before my time. I don't well, think your time is much before my time. Well, I never heard of anything like that. You weren't a Nazarene. We'll get to the bottom of this. Where were you? Where did you grow up as a wee lad when you were a young man? What uh, part of the country? I was born in Alabama. But okay. Where about where you about you? Church. Uh, little town called Lyon, Ohio. There you go. See, that's the difference between being in Alabama and being in Ohio. Things yeah. are different. He's underneath the belt, Bible belt. You see there, you know. We, the Nazarene Church, there were many in the generation really right ahead of me. Who their children were angry with them because wow. they couldn't do these things, and yet when the next generation came on, their mom and dad welcomed them in, loved them, celebrated prom, um, <laughs> and all stuff. And uh, so things changed. I got yeah. a question: What adult denomination did you grow up in? You know, Church. Yeah, I grew up with a Methodist, so we weren't nearly as. Uh, Particular, you know, uh, right. <coughs> now, it's good stuff. Bob, you had a finger there on uh, some scripture or something here. Discipline, discipline and punishment. Discipline and punishment. For example, in my day, when I was still raising my children, on the day, I used to punish them with the belt. Yeah. And of course, they didn't like it because I had to count the numbers. Uh huh. Whatever number they pulled out is how many. Excellent. That sounds pretty just <laughs> to me. One zero. <laughs> how many children did you have there? Uh, Two. Okay. Well, at least one of them enjoyed that process, I bet, immensely. He <laughs> killed the other two. But that's good stuff. The answer is is that discipline or is that punishment? I believe it's discipline, obviously, because that's what I was raised with was, and, uh, you know, if you, you know what the rules are, and, and I think punishment sometimes, if you don't tell what the rules are, then you start administering uh, penalties for things that people were unaware of, that could be a big problem in life. I mean, it's not part of what we're reading here in the uh, third chapter of uh, Colossians, which has plenty of good stuff in it, which I think Alex is going to direct us to part of the, uh, the third chapter of Colossians. Well, my... My thought on like the difference between punishment and discipline is your heart posture. Are you simply trying to cause harm from punishment, or are you trying to, to teach and to build up that person? So obviously if your kid does something wrong and they know that the consequence is to get spanked, you're tr and your, your intention there is to, to teach and uplift them and to deter them from an activity or an action that is going to cause additional harm to them, then fine. But if your kid like back talks you and you just slug him across the face and give him a black eye because you're an abusive dad, that's not coming from a place of love. That's just, that's just you're a mean, hard-ass man who just doesn't deserve to be responsible for children. If that's intended as discipline, it's a failure. Absolutely. And, and just to kind of put it in layman's terms, uh, Kenny Rogers wasn't looking to discipline the Gatlin boys after they messed around with Becky. He was there to punish them. Uh -huh. Right? Remember Coward County? Mean, it's back into this, like children obey and you know parents don't provoke. If your children are obeying, then there's no need for punishment or discipline. But if your children are obeying and you're punishing them, you're just provoking them. If your children are disobeying and you're disciplining, 
then you're teaching and uplifting. That's not you provoking them to wrong action. That's you correcting their bad choice. So those two things kind of go hand in hand. But if you're doing unkind, unloving things to them and they're in a state of obedience, then you're in the wrong as the parent. The thing is to make sure they understand why you punish them. Yeah. So they won't repeat, which sometimes they do anyway. Yeah. But at least they know it's wrong when they do it. I mean, God did that with the Israelites time and time and time again throughout the Old Testament where he's like, don't do this or this is going to be your, your consequence. And they were like, whatever, and they did it, and they suffered the consequence. They repented, they came out of it, they did something else stupid. They had another consequence, they came out of it, they did something else stupid, you know, so on and so forth. So it took the whole people of Israel hundreds of thousands, you know, and thousands of years to figure that out. So we shouldn't expect our kids to figure it out in 18 years. <laughs> I mean, they wandered the desert for 40. Yeah. And that's twice the amount of time that we have our little children under our care that are supposed to, you know, obey us. So, you know, we have to give them grace and the benefit of the doubt to know, like, that was God talking directly to Israel, and they still couldn't figure it out. That's all good stuff. Anything else you see there in our chapter 3? Yes, Bill. I think... Uh, good use of the finger. i got to remind you there, you know, some people open their mouth without lifting their finger. Yeah, that's good. Cool. But all the, a helpful verse of all of that is let the peace of God, God what, rule in your heart. Where are you at there? To, That's, it's six, six, no, six, yeah. Sixteen. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. Yeah, fifteen. Really helpful when those times come around because it works. But if you can stop <coughs> what you're doing and say right. that, then well. That's good stuff. I, the, the, the part about uh, the kids, though, is I guess, it's, you know, I, I envision from reading that, you know, but when you, you, you see people that are constantly on their kids, and they don't even have room to breathe, and, and it gets to where it's almost abusive. It's like, oh, man, it's just, you're going to drop that. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna, do it. and, and it's, 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 it is one thing if they're doing stupid stuff that you, you gotta correct them because stupid is supposed to hurt. So, um, but, but it sometimes if you're not careful, it gets to where you're always looking for something to go to wrong. You're always looking for the bad. You're, uh, and, and then it, it, it gets contagious, and you that becomes their personality because you're telling them that's who they are. So there's, I, I think it, it, there, it is wise in counseling them to just be prepared for that. Be, you know, don't let yourself go beyond where it is loving discipline. Well, I'll put my finger up on that because if you went to verse 1 and 2, you would find it says, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. And many people you run into, they name the name of Christ, they walk around, they talk about Jesus, but if you look at their lives, they're not exactly living like they think they're in the presence of God in the kingdom of heaven. So if you read that, if you seek, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. And I know a lot of people, I don't know if you run into them, that they're very concerned about what's going to happen in November when we get to vote for somebody and they believe to think that either the government or bad people or China or all these things control them where really the question is are you yielding yourself to your own self, self, self to the extent that's not Satan that then, then, or yielding yourself to Christ which oftentimes most of us seem to be like we're married people or people who live in a family of sorts. You have all kinds of problems when your wife says, hey, can you do this? Your instinctive thought is, well, no, I had my day planned out, and now you want me to add something for you in my day instead of saying, hey, Heavenly Father, you've given me this woman. She hasn't killed me or run away or found someone better, which would be easy to do. I should be delighted to go do something. Who in this world should I want to make happy other than my wonderful wife? I mean, you'd have to be stupid not to say, yes, yes, I'd love to do that, my darling. Thank you for telling me. But unfortunately, at least for me, Pedro, I don't know how it is in your household, but <laughs> I have a hundred reasons why not. And... The other thing is to, uh, I found a little thing that if you could substitute, 
I don't know what you think about when God speaks. I mean, I know sometimes it's like peanuts where, you know, with the adults in the peanut cartoon, if you've ever seen their classic cartoons, they'll have this thing where the teacher will be saying something that sounds like this. It goes, whop, 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 whop. Yes, I understood. I didn't do my homework. Whop, 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 whop. I don't want to stay after school today. I'll miss the ball game. Sometimes when God speaks, it sounds like that. It's like, Pedro, Pedro. You're like, okay, Lord. And that's how it sometimes is. But when you seek God first and put your heart, your affections, because what do you really love? Apparently baseball, <laughs> not your kids, but hey, what the heck. <laughs> you raised them well, Bob. I don't know what you did. <laughs> yes, Bill. Yes, Billo. Yeah, go ahead. You get a rebuttal comment for free. But yeah, there you go. You taught him everything he knows that's wrong. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah. It's, it's their motivation is not what they think it is or want to act like it is. They're self motivated. They're not God motivated. Oops. Self-motivated. That's good stuff, Brian. Uh, you, you had um, relay, related verses 1 and 2 <laughs> among many, anything, but just the example of the upcoming election. Um, verse 2. Uh, First thing, first thing through my mind, once you pointed that out, wasn't as much that you know that's you know that's going to be crazy, but we're witnessing it right now with uh, for, for over two weeks now with uh, Harrison Butker and a a devout Catholic who gave a Catholic valued speech to a 100% Catholic audience yes. at a Catholic school, but the people of the world set their affection on things of the world. Yes. So they don't even want to attempt to understand that he's not speaking as a worldly person. And they and they're conflating it to where he's this evil demagogue. And I mean and, and that's the world we're living in right now. I mean and it's he has gained a lot of support for this, so I'm not going to say he's out there being martyred, but he is getting hammered and petitioned, like petitions of a million people telling the chiefs they need to fire this guy because of what he stated as his beliefs. Oh, let me back up just a second. Everybody knows what he's talking about then as far as that, you know, basically gentlemen made uh, affirming statements towards the role of women and how to live your life basically in the, consistent with the Christian mindset. And they've taken it all out of context to crucify him for being anti-woman and all these terrible things and want to get him fired from his job, which is pretty much insane but he just happens to be an all pro so it's doubtful he's going to get fired but um but yeah. at the same time it's dangerous just the idea that you get this type of an uproar in a public pretty much a virtual lynch mob coming after him it's his name's harrison butler he's a kicker for the chiefs he gave a commencement speech about two weeks ago I think it was at Notre Dame or someplace, or someplace where his alma mater was. Yeah, it's a total yeah. Catholic school. Yeah. And even the nuns came out and, and posted like how they were offended oh, by my. the speech. Like, okay, so, he, so basically even within the Catholic community, you're getting these worldly, or people with worldly minds and hearts. Right infiltrating into it. And so are we. All of our churches have that too. That's true. Well, you know, Pedro and Jack and uh, 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 Tom, I do get a bonus if I get everybody to participate. It seems like many people <laughs> raise their fingers. Well, yes, Pedro, thank you. It's, it's hard discipline or children. Because the thing right now is it is good, it's bad when I race. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I go straight to the point. Uh, right now, smoking marijuana is good. Yeah. The doctor will give it to you. Um, you have children uh, and grandchildren. They start smoking, and I know it because I'm racing with that. Right, right. And I tell them, you got to stop doing that because that's not good for you. Yeah. And I say, no, uh, everybody says it's good. Yeah. Include my mom and my dad. Right. They say uh, my mom is 77 and uh, my father is 78. And uh, they say they have a brownie with a, a, 
Yeah, with THC, whatever it is yeah, I have. Yeah, they yep. say some, I eat a little piece and I sleep. And I say, I told you 20 years ago and you don't believe it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so now, yeah. when I see my grandchildren, I have seven grandchildren. The, the older is 21. My uh, daughter is 33, uh, 21, and 18. All of them are smoking. Wow. Everybody's smoking right now. Yeah. That's, that's, that's normal. All right. And uh, how can I discipline him when they know I did it in the past? Right. And uh, when I try discipline with love, uh, always God told me, Pedro, don't forget where I catch you. You know, when, right. when, when I change you. I change you when you are 40 years old. I have 58 now. Mm -hmm. So take a patient with your children. Easy. Yes. And I got it. Okay. So I got to focus again with my children. And uh, I still love it. And uh, they don't want to go home. They don't want to go to church. They racing in church. They don't want to go to church. The only way I, now I start eating group in my house. And uh, I cook it. Wow. I cook and the first Sunday, that's, that Sunday is coming. Cool. So I invited the, the house is full now because I like to cook. And uh, when I have rice and beans in the, in the house, everybody come. There you go. And I don't preach no more. No more preach. Wow. I give you a list. Whatever you want to do, God do it for you. Pray, pray request. Right. And that's they fantastic. Started, they started with a prayer request. And we sit down on the big table. Right, right. Um, we have a little uh, game. Is uh, You will say what is the best and what is the bad new you have today. Yeah. And this is amazing how can the children open. Hey, I, I don't have no more job. They fired me today. So we will pray for them. That's and fantastic. That's and we have good time. And I try by myself. How can, well, not by myself. God is behind me. But I want to see how I can push my grandchildren right. to, to the cross. I want to bring to the cross. That's but amazing. It's but it's hard. It's hard. That's amazing good important. stuff. <laughs> well, you've got three fingers popping up there, Pedro. You're a very fertile, very fertile uh, source of information. We're going to go with Bob because... Uh, Pedro, you're not getting much help from the state of Florida either. <laughs> yeah. not legalized marijuana. Yeah. Ads on every day. This is still bad. This is bad stuff. We got Bill to start, then we got Bob next over there. Go ahead, Bob. I apologize for the mixing names. Very difficult for parents to raise their children now because the schools are raising them for. Correct. And that's, that's really making it tough. And their goal is to make them wicked. I mean, that's what they their their goal is to achieve that goal for the society's benefit. Go ahead, Alex. I think the thing that my wife and I have tried to focus on is just because the world says that it's good and it's okay, that doesn't mean that it's good and that it's okay. Go back to. God's word and go back to the scriptures. And right. That is what is good. That's right. So it's like, and just because it's legal doesn't mean it's godly. It's legal to have a homosexual relationship. That doesn't make it godly. It doesn't make it good. Just because the law or the state or the country or wherever the world says that's okay, the world is going to intentionally tell us that the things that are going against God are good, they are enjoyable. They're fun. Sin is fun. If sin wasn't fun, nobody would do it. You know, if we didn't derive any sense of anything from it, just cause pain all the time, you would stop. So, now, your adult children or your adult grandchildren are not under your guide of discipline. You can plant seed and you can show them by action and the way that you live out your life the things that you believe that God are teaching you and then he can cultivate that seed. It's not up to you to save them. You just keep living your life, doing your thing. Now, if it's your kid who's 13 years old at home and they're smoking pot, I'm gonna smack my daughter upside the head and tell her to get that crap out of my house or get out of my house because that's not what, that's not what the Bible tells us and that's not how you know, we're gonna live here. But if she's 18, 20, 23, 30, has her own kids and she wants to do that with them, okay. I'm not her, you know, I'm not in charge of disciplining and, and causing her obedience. I've done what I can to put her out there in the world and, and do all those things. So don't sell yourself short 
by you know saying, oh, well, the world says marijuana is good now. Well, the Bible still doesn't necessarily agree with that, you know, assertion. So that's good stuff. Um, I just. Yeah, I see Brian's finger there, yes. If I heard, if I heard right, Pedro, then your, one of your conflicts in that was that you used to get high. Yeah. And, that and they know it. And they, they know it because they know. I, and, and, I share my testimony a bunch sure. of times. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and, that, and that's, so that's, that's kind of what makes it more of a conflict because you don't want to come across as a hypocrite. And plus they do know, and, and, and I, I have the same issue. I mean... It's obvious. If Your you dad's know. right there listening to you, Brian. <laughs> oh, I don't want you to get in trouble, man. <laughs> I don't want you to be a narc or anything. I, I didn't have to tell my kids I was like that because all of my pictures and stuff and my concert shirts and all of that. Oh, my goodness. Two two together. You let him do that but, under your roof? But what, to, but what you do have is an influence as, as a godly, honest person where you just say, Here's the thing. I regret that, and here's why. My mind is a little slower. When I was on that stuff, I was lazier. I lacked ambition. And you voted Democratic. And, and I, did, I did vote Democratic. I'm just, just telling you these things. I know. It's medical, <laughs> medical related facts. I mean, scientific. You can't, you can't fight the science. <laughs> In other words, you're brain damaged, is what we're trying to say. <laughs> Sorry about your son in law, but sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and you're a great influence, and it sounds like you came up with a that's just a beautiful way of getting everybody together, and now they're writing prayer requests down. So, I mean, it's well, basically safe to say the weed didn't totally destroy our minds, right? It, 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 we got. We still can think through things, but now we trust because we're clean. Yeah, we can think better. Mm -hmm. Well, I was thinking the interesting too when you roll down that scripture, you know, and 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 your affections at one point in time, like many of us, they were not in heaven. They were possibly in hell, certainly on this fleshly flame. It says, you know, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. And that's what happened to every one of us who is truly alive in Christ. The old us is dead. And whoever that person was, whether it's a thief, a liar, drug addict, whatever it is, they're dead. And you have used discretion, because just like we talked about the kicker, he was speaking truth, but it's having a big impact in his life. But with discretion, you also want to be truthful for God. Then it goes on and said, uh, for your dad, your life is hidden with Christ in God. And, and I bet if I was a preacher, you could spend a month trying to get your congregation to be hid in with Christ in God. Because, because God, is, God is perfect. We're not perfect, but God is, and Christ is in us. And that brings us where we need to get to. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then we shall also appear with him. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, all that to me, you could probably put in the evil concupiscence would be the idea that, hey, you got to go out and get drunk to go do something. Hey, you got to go out and get high. To go do, you got to go out and uh, take fentanyl. I mean, apparently fentanyl must be a wonderful thing to do because otherwise people would not kill themselves literally for the experience. And you didn't away we go. Much. Yeah, yeah. One time, little dab will do you there. But all that is good stuff. Other fingers. Anyone else got comments there? I know we've got like uh, 25 verses here, and I'll just go uh, with that uh, 16, where I think he was summing it up: "Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, and teaching, and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord." I think that's one missing thing that he. Wow. It's just singing to the Lord when we're going through hard things. And yes. We're seeing things that we don't want to see in our family members. But singing a psalm, that's what he's saying, taking a psalm, like Psalm 23 or Psalm, you know, a psalm and singing it over your family. Yes. I think it's just, it's it's keeping our mind state in the right place. I think letting the Word of God dwell in us richly is like our pastor was preaching this weekend. You know, let the Word work for you, right? Like, right. If you're working the word, the word will work for you. You just have to put this word that you want wow. in the family and put it over them every day, you know, and, uh, you know, praying for one another, you know, confessing our faults and our sins for one another that we might be healed. Like, that's what you're doing, you know, and 
putting that word over your life, like, you know, I'm healed, I have the mind of Christ, you know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, like right. putting that word on myself and making it activate in my life, but I have to say it because the word is voice activated, it doesn't just do anything sitting here on this page, it's alive and powerful, but when you speak it, when you say it, but it has to be in you to come out of you because, you know, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. So putting it in you every day, just constantly. This word I believe over my family, I, I'm going to just keep meditating on it until it comes to pass. And that's that's what I would say I get most out of it. It sums it all up, like you said. That's good stuff. Well, that's a blessing. I, uh... So you and you singing with grace in your hearts. Is that something you participate or, or practice, have experience with, Jack? Is that something you've done? Can you share a little bit about that? Do you mind? I don't want to put you on the spot or anything. Well, but my first ministry when I when I first got saved, when I first got saved, when I came out of the world. I went to this little Baptist church. I'm watching. Satellite Beach, hey brother, God bless you. And um, and I, uh, you know, just came to this church. I had no idea, didn't know anybody. And the first thing, this little. You know, shiny gray head woman walks up to me and she says, We need your help. And I said, What for? Because we don't have anyone in the choir that can sing bass. <laughs> and I said, I have no experience. She says, That doesn't matter. Just come. And, you know, I was looking for just a place to connect. And I found this choir of, you know, all these different people. Wow. They weren't professional singers or anything, but we all sang and with with hymns and spiritual songs and just gave it all we could and it didn't really matter because you're singing to the Lord and it, it really helped me to not only connect with people but to to learn hymns. And hymns are work like very much scripture, you know, so putting that in you and just being able to sing it out. You know, That's marvelous. Me. Well, I thought that was good that Pedro shared there about cooking up some uh, black beans and rice. I was going to get you an invitation, figured if you can sing, and then he needs this half thing there, you can sing for your supper at Pedro's house there. Come over, and uh, because I thought that was phenomenal to have people write down their prayer requests and then share what the best thing and what the worst thing that happened in the Lord during that week is. And I thought that was a very, very insightful way to minister to the generations and bring the family together. So that was wonderful. Well, Bill, you got anything else you need to hear to done today? It looks like Brian's already put away his scripture and like he's ready to go home or something. He's unpacking his uh, camera case. and. I, I think we had a great discussion today. Thank you. There you go. Praise very God. Good, very good. We appreciate it, Jason. Always a pleasure. God bless you.